Programming languages can take many forms, from visual programming languages used for education to complex industry standard interactive environments and the commonly used text-based general purpose programming languages. As the name implies, general purpose programming languages are not specified to a particular task. So unlike visual programming languages like Blockly and Scratch, they would not typically contain domain-specific instructions for controlling movement of sprites or problem solving. These languages are general and designed to be used across a range of domains. They are often accompanied by additional libraries that provide more specialised functionality, but we will come back to that idea in our next learning video. General purpose programming languages are text-based, which means that programmers convert their algorithms into a series of textual instructions, which are grouped into what is known as blocks. Each block represents a logical grouping of instructions. For example, you might have a block of instructions associated with a branch in your algorithm, or where you have included repetition. However, while general purpose programming languages sound quite different, they share a lot of commonalities with visual programming languages. In this video, I'm going to show some examples from a range of programming languages so you can see how similar they are, but this is not meant to be the end of our discussion. Here is an example of a short program in a language called JavaScript that adds two numbers together and then displays the result of that calculation so that the user of that program can see the result. Like visual programming languages, we are able to declare variables in our programs that hold data. We create variables of different data types and we can store values in our variables. We can also change the value of variables by assigning them the results of calculating expressions. Instructions in our programs are executed sequentially and can contain the fundamental programming constructs of branching, i.e. if statements, and repetition, implemented through loops. The syntax of any programming language has to be very precise. Computers are not like humans and are not able to work through mistakes or variations in sentence structure. For this reason, programming languages are very exact and each instruction or sentence needs to be formed using an exact template structure. One of the advantages of visual programming languages is that the use of blocks means that it is difficult to make a mistake. You cannot ask for an instruction that does not exist and your instructions are always well-formed sentences. However, in general purpose programming languages, you have to be more careful to make sure that your instructions, your sentences, are well-formed. We can see some of the templates for our instructions in the examples that follow. In this example, we have code that implements the following flowchart. If the value of our variable limit is less than 10, then we display one string to the user. Otherwise, we display another. The code that we have written follows the same structure as our flowchart. Depending on the value of our variable, which we test in our condition, we decide which branch of our if statement to execute. We also have language constructs for repetition, including loop constructs that allow us to repeat a set of instructions while a condition is true. This is similar to what we might have used in Blockly, where we continue moving forward until we reach the end of the maze. We also have loop constructs that repeat things a number of times, such as how we use Blockly to repeat a set of drawing instructions to draw a square. There are many different general purpose programming languages. JavaScript, C, C++, Java, Python are some of the most popular languages. There are also many existing online support resources and communities to help educators adopt them. As well as general purpose programming languages, there are text-based programming languages that are designed to support programming within specific domains. One language that we have used for teaching introductory programming courses is the processing language, which is used for drawing images and creating animations. In these more domain-specific programming languages, there are existing instructions that suit the domain. In this case, the domain is graphics, and so there are many existing instructions in the language for drawing shapes and setting colours. Here is an example just to show you what this kind of language looks like. In this code, we are creating a drawing canvas, setting our draw colour to red 
and they're drawing two shapes, a rectangle and a circle. This language uses a coordinate system to lay out its shapes, which can provide some useful links to mathematics as well as art. As you can see, there are specific instructions for these particular purposes. OK, so now we have provided a quick introduction to what general purpose programming languages look like. In the project streams in this course, you might choose to use either visual programming languages or general purpose programming languages. For each type of language, we provide at a later point in the course some more detail on how those languages work, as well as links to external resources that can provide tutorial and detailed support for that language. If you are new to programming, you might want to consider starting with visual programming. However, both are certainly achievable for anyone in this course.